am extremely pleased that finally our sister and closest neighbor, Cuba, has taken its rightful place around this important table. This celebrated move is a victory for the people of the Americas and symbolizes a clear consensus that Cuba's reintegration in the hemispheric system is a vital step towards development and progress for the region. I commend President Barack Obama and President Raul Castro for their bold and visionary leadership. We look forward to other positive developments, including the lifting of the trade embargo against Cuba. To be poor is a crime. Mr. President, it is obvious that careful thought has been given to the selection of the theme of this summit, Prosperity with Equity, the challenge of cooperation in the Americas. The Latin American and Caribbean region recorded only modest GDP growth of 2.6% in 2030. In 2012, it was reported that as much as 28.2% of the population in the region was living in poverty, with 11.3% living in extreme poverty or indigence. These indicators must compel us to act with greater urgency. The disparity in the distribution of wealth is evident in the number of persons living without access to basic necessities. Our region's potential for growth and development is negatively impacted by high levels of public debt, unemployment, crime, and violence. We must redouble our international cooperation as a community of the Americas to attain shared prosperity with equity. Jamaica is fully committed to addressing poverty. We have made steady progress in certain areas, including access to health, education, sports, culture, housing, and social security. While we pursue greater levels of economic growth, we have also been implementing a number of programs to protect and empower the most vulnerable, enhance their productive capacities, and improve their well-being. Mr. President, climate change poses a clear and present danger to our continued development, while the high cost of energy for some countries limits our ability to be globally competitive. Jamaica urgently seeks legally binding commitments at the upcoming conference in Paris by all parties December later this year. This is a matter of survival for small island developing states. Jamaica is grateful for the cooperation of our partners as we seek to meet our socioeconomic challenges. Mr. President, in this regard, the petro caribbean arrangement offered by the government of Venezuela is one of the finest examples of South-South cooperation and is consistent with our summit theme, prosperity with equity. We wish to use this opportunity to again extend our appreciation to President Maduro for the continued support of Venezuela. Mr. President, we remain concerned over the designation and provisions of middle-income countries without appreciating that each country has its distinct challenges and should be treated accordingly. Per capita income alone does not point an accurate picture of a country's vulnerabilities and development challenges. 
Mr. President, let us use the opportunity of this summit to focus not on what divides us, but rather on what unites us. Let us seek to build bridges rather than construct walls. This message emerged clearly from the CARICOM USA summit held just two days ago in Kingston, Jamaica. In working toward this objective, we look forward to constructive dialogue between our two long-standing friends, United States and Venezuela, in the best interest of peace and unity in our hemisphere. It is from this position that we are best able to address the needs of the weakest, poorest, and most vulnerable in our hemisphere and move towards ensuring that there is prosperity with equity in our region. We must ensure that when the pages of history of our time are written, we can be justly proud that we laid a solid foundation for generations to come and we restored our strong hemispheric family of nations. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you.